Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon R5C for video production training series. In this video, we're on location and I'm being joined by cinematographer James Kwan and we're gonna have a conversation about prepping for production. So let's go. Okay, so here we are and I'd like to start by introducing James Kwan. Hello. James is a cinematographer based out of Los Angeles and Albuquerque, and you primarily work on commercials. Yes. Features. Yep. Uh, you just wrapped a feature in Atlanta. I did, yeah. And I get James to work with me on creating educational content for Canon, actually quite a lot of it. Over We've years. done a lot. We have done a lot. And for some reason, he has agreed to be on this side of the camera for this series. First time. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this project, this promo we've been working on with the R5C. We are in Oregon at a university campus. We've been working with a number of athletes. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about prepping for production. Yes. So let's get to it. Prepping for production. What's the first step? Well, one of the first things I like to do when I'm on location is uh, ADB or automatic black balance. That maps the noise pattern in the blacks and gives us the cleanest image possible. So uh, whether I'm moving outside to inside and there's a big temperature change or vice versa, uh, it's nice when you have time to do an ADB. For me, that ABB feature is really great to have. And you don't see that in every mirrorless camera, that remapping. And when people are going through the video mode menus, they'll see in all caps ABB, and they might not know what that means. It's a huge feature to have. It's huge, and it only takes a minute to do. So uh, there are some other camera systems that take a lot longer. But um, ABB for uh, a minute, it's, it's worth it when you have the time. So of course, we prep for production. We get on location or on set, and we do an ABB or automatic black balance. What are we doing next with our camera or cameras? Uh, well, after that, it's important to decide all your basic camera settings and making sure that they're all the same. So that's your white balance, your ISO, your frame rate. With touch control on the camera, I could quickly change my settings, whether it was shutter, color temperature, uh, frame rate, or format, um, I could always uh, quickly uh, access those tools. So it, it was a, nice to have those features. Another thing that we like to do in uh, cinema shoots is use shutter angle versus shutter speed. That controls your uh, motion blur. In cinema, uh, one of the ingredients is uh, 180 degree shutter. So what's nice about the R5C is it has a setting for shutter angle. So that does kind of the math for you instead of translating it to uh, shutter speed like in a still camera. Yeah, and we do talk a little bit more about shutter angle in one of the other videos in the series, so be sure to check that out. So let's talk a little bit about clear scan as well. Did you have a scenario where we had to use that on the shoot? Sure. Uh, shooting monitors has always been a tricky thing. So uh, a lot of times you'll see like a flicker or banding, and uh, it, it's great to have that ability to dial it out. Yeah, and it's a great feature because when you're seeing things like those scan lines, when you switch over to clear scan, we can actually dial in precisely based on a Hertz value. And you and I know this, but the math is basically if you're shooting at essentially 24 frames per second, start at about 48 Hertz and go up and down just slightly until you can eliminate that problem. So we've done an ABB. We've got our recording settings to where we want them to be, at least for our first setup of the day. What are some of the other tools and things that we're starting to use? Let's say, for instance, when we get into an interview setup or we're shooting something with one of our athletes for the promo. Well, after that, I like using uh, some of my in-camera tools to set a base exposure. So using the waveform or a false color, you know, we like shooting on chip charts or a gray card uh, just to match all the cameras and make sure uh, that they're all looking the same and uh, exposed correctly. Yeah, it's pretty common for us to bring that waveform monitor up 
and when we're going to go ahead and shoot an interview or any footage if we have the time bring in a gray card neutral gray 18 percent gray and sort of see where our value is and it's really important especially when you're shooting things like raw or log to understand where to map that gray because it's a little bit different than if you were shooting in for instance rec 709 so it's understanding your camera system and understanding how that camera system works that I think is very important in production. Learn the tool that you're using. Absolutely. And learn how to use it properly. The last thing I think we should talk about, which is just as important, if not more important a lot of the time when it comes to production, is making sure that all of our cameras are matching, not just in terms of their recording settings, but in terms of time code. And one of the things that we have on the R5C is a dedicated time code port. So we had on this particular production, especially because we had three cameras running, a sound recordist, Aldo Ray, and we were doing what we call double system sound, where we were recording reference audio to our R5Cs, but we wanted to make sure that the time code matched with our three cameras and also the sound recordist and their mixer recorder. So Aldo would go in with these DOD TC1 boxes. We would set the cameras to time code in. He would jam sync time code to those cameras so that they all matched. And then, of course, his recorder mixer was also matched to that. It makes life so much easier in post-production for the editor and the entire post team. So it's a really, really important step, and it's great to have that dedicated port on the camera. Yeah, it's great to see it on such a small body, and uh, it's uh, really surprising to find it on this one. Yeah, well, it is essentially, once you boot it up into that video mode, a digital cinema camera. So it's great to have that feature. James, thanks so much for chatting. Thank you so much. So there you have it, that's prepping for production. If you haven't already, check out the other videos in this series. As always, the goal is education, so thanks for watching.